Hey everyone, Ruben Lara here, and I'm really excited to show you what Marker Remap can do for your motion graphics workflow. Now make sure you're using at least version 1.4. It has optimized UI that makes for really efficient marker extraction and placement. Now, if you're new to Marker Remap, the concept is super simple. It adds an expression to the time remapping field of a pre-comp that allows you to use layer markers to retime and reuse animation ranges inside that pre-comp. The best way to explain it is to show it. So here I have a document with various UI elements and marker remap hasn't been applied to any of these layers yet. Uh, let's just take a look at what we have going on here. Here at the top uh, left, we have just a simple tap event. So a little tap in and tap out. Uh, we have an avatar with a picture and it has various states. So there's an in state, um, there's kind of like an online you know, active state. There's a heart tap and then a little heart pop at the top. Uh, then we have this little s button that slides open and this button has master properties on it so that we can change the color and the source text and just you know reuse it as many times as we want. Then we have this little check mark and it has two segments to it, uh, a little ring that loops in and a little check that animates. We have a simple wind power animation with, with some elements that animate in and then one loop animation that loops. We have a simple switch and we have a percentage animation that goes from zero to 100. So we're gonna see how we can use Marker Remap to use these efficiently and in a way that allows for minimal keyframing and maximum editability. Let's start with a really simple example first. Let's take this uh, switch here. We'll double click and go in. And it's a real simple animation of only 10 frames and we just have a switch going from left to right. Now the best way to set up a Marker Remap workflow is from the inside out. So for example, here we are inside our switch animation. And the first thing we wanna do is identify a range of animation that we wanna control in our parent comp. And the way we do that is by setting split timeline markers inside that comp. So let's just use After Effects native marker placement tools. And I'll just come right here to the right side and drag a marker out onto the timeline. Next, I wanna split this timeline into a range. So I'll press Alt or Option on Mac and just drag that marker out and you see we'll now have a split timeline marker that gives us a range. So I'll just set that to the last frame and let's just go ahead and name it. So I'll double click it and we'll call this in. Now let's go back to our parent comp and the only thing we really need to do is use the marker remap pa panel to click enable retiming, which adds an expression to the time remap field. So this comp is now frozen on the first frame and we can just go ahead and close the time remap property, we won't be needing that anymore. And now this comp is basically waiting for instructions on what animation range to play and when. And the way it knows that is by looking for correspondingly named markers on this layer. So let's go ahead and add a marker with the same name on this comp. So I'm just going to right click, go to markers and click add marker. I'll give it a range, double click and call it in. Now marker remap is taking the range of this layer marker and mapping it to the timeline marker inside that pre-comp. I'm just gonna solo this layer so we're not distracted by everything else. And now when we play it, you can see that it's playing the range that we had set earlier. But not only that, it's being super helpful because as I move this marker, it's freeze framing on the first frame of that range. And then as we play that marker through, it's freezing on the last frame of that range as well. Not only that, I can drag this marker and completely change the speed of that animation on the fly. And that's basically it. At the very least, the only thing you really need from the marker remap panel is the enable retiming button. But this setup is so powerful in a way that makes it useful in so many ways that the rest of the panel is there to help you speed through wrangling your markers and what you can do with them. For example, instead of manually placing and splitting a marker range using the default commands, let's go ahead and add a new instance of this in range using the marker remap panel. So we'll make sure that our switch layer is selected. And all we need to do is hover over the extract markers dialog box. And marker remap automatically reaches in to that comp to tell us exactly what timeline markers are found inside of it. Now, just by clicking on the word in, marker remap automatically places a marker range at the original timing on our layer. So now we have two instances of this switch switching in. The other thing we can do is reset the timing of the first one to the original timing by setting the playhead at the beginning of the marker and just re-clicking the word in. Lastly, we can adjust the behavior of the second instance of in 
to play in reverse. So let's just go ahead and uh, drag this back in time and let's head on over to the edit tab. Now marker remap is usable either in tabbed mode or in full panel mode. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up to the full panel so we have all of our commands available to us at once. Let's move the playhead over any part of the range of the second marker and let's use one of these flags to alter the behavior. In this case, time reverse. I'll click it and you can see that it's now renamed our marker with a less than sign. This now tells Marker Remap to use that same animation, but just play it in reverse. So now we have a switch that turns on and turns off. We can also reuse markers we've already set up by copying and pasting. So I'll select my layer, bring the playhead over any part of a marker range we wanna copy. I'll copy that marker, bring it over and hit paste. We can also copy more than one at once by using the work area. So I'll set the work area to just roughly include the markers we wanna copy make sure that our pre-comp is selected. If we hover over the copy button, we'll see that by pressing shift, we'll copy all markers within our work area. So I'm gonna hold shift down, hit copy, go to another part of the timeline and then click paste. And so we can reuse those marker ranges as many times as we want on that same layer. Let's look at a setup with more than one marker range. So we'll come here to our check mark and go inside of it. And I already know that we have a sequence of 40 frames where the ring comes in and then a sequence of 30 frames where a check mark appears. Instead of using After Effects native tools for adding markers, let's use the Add Marker button, which is really powerful. So I'll click Add Marker, and we can batch add various markers at different lengths right from one command line. So I'm gonna type in ring colon 40. That's gonna give us our first marker at 40 frames, comma, check colon 30. And that's gonna give us a marker at 30 frames. I'll hit enter and that's automatically set up for us. So ring and check. Great, I'll come back out to our main comp. And now that we've added those inside, we'll click enable retiming. And now when I hover over, we have our ring and our check markers ready to go. So let's see what this might look like for a UX setup. Let's imagine that we had several options in a row that we wanted to check. So we'll click our check mark and just do ring and we'll see what that looks like. That brings that ring in. Now it's at 20 frames. Let's make it a lot quicker, just at 10 frames. So I can move anywhere inside this marker range and we'll use the set duration command. So all we need to do is click that button and now we've set it to 10. And of course we can set that to whatever we want. So now we have a quick ring coming in. Let's duplicate this a few times and maybe offset them a little bit. So now we have a quick checklist set up and at some point during our animation, we can just select any one of these and select check. And now we have our rings come in and then one of them gets checked. Now in the simplest of cases, let's take a look at automatic setup mode, which does the entire setup for you. And this is mainly for animations that will only benefit from one main sequence inside of its pre-comp. So for example, here we have this button, which basically has one action. This button doesn't have anything applied to it yet. I'm gonna hover over the enable retiming button and you'll see that plus alt automatically applies marker remap setup on the selected comps, which means it enables retiming, adds a layer marker and full length internal timeline marker of the same name. So I'm just gonna hold down alt, press enable retiming, and this whole pre-comp has automatically been set up with the entire setup. So we have uh, a layer marker that's named with the same name as the pre-comp. And if we go in, there's a corresponding full length timeline marker inside of it. So we can immediately, just with one click, go ahead and create this setup where we have now retimed the animation. Again, all the normal things, you can uh, retime it, reverse it, uh, move it around and redeclare it on that same comp. All right, let's look at a couple of other fun things we can do. Let's uh, play around with this wind animation a little bit. This has already been set up with timeline markers inside the pre-comp, and we know that because the extract dialog box is telling us we have at least two markers in there. So we're gonna come in here to the beginning and let's just go ahead and extract all of them. So by clicking extract all markers, it not only adds the uh, time remap expression, but it automatically brings in any markers it finds inside. So we have our in animation and then we have our wind animation. And that might be something that we want to loop over and over. So let's go ahead and just pull this back and let's just uh, time this out to our switch. So we'll say our switch will switch on and then we want our wind animation to start. Now, of course, we can move our whole layer down, but just for the sake of showing some of the shifting markers functionality, if we select a specific pre-comp with markers and 
bring our playhead over any one of the markers, we can now go into the shift next buttons and just shift all the markers forward and backwards. We can hit the shift button on our keyboard and click and it'll do 10 at a time. So let's go ahead and um, yeah, we can shift all these forward and let's just turn that switch on. And as soon as the switch goes on, we want this animation to play. So we'll use the shift next markers to current time button and that will scoot all markers back to the playhead. So now our switch turns on and our animation pops up there. Now we wanna uh, take this wind animation and let's just go ahead and shorten it. We'll make it really fast. All right, and it plays through once. And we wanna loop that animation. All we have to do is put our playhead anywhere inside that marker range. And instead of the reverse flag, we're gonna use the loop flag. And that adds an at symbol in front of the name and that tells marker remap that we want it to loop. So now we're gonna go in, wind, and that will just keep looping until it encounters another marker. So let's go ahead and keep looping that. And let's see, let's make this a, uh, 20 frame loop that'll go really fast and we'll just go forward another 20 frames and now we'll close that animation by bringing the in back in and doing a time reverse let's go ahead and delete these two uh, markers on the switch because we don't need them anymore so I'm gonna hit B and N and we'll shift delete markers inside work area we'll just take this switch back out and now we have a timed switch that turns our wind animation on and off. Actually, that should be a little bit before, right? So now we get our animation switch and it turns off. Yeah, super simple to just edit these things after the fact. Next, let's take a look at this percentage animation and see how the range mode really makes any kind of variable range animation super useful. Let's go ahead and duplicate this three times. Now there's only one action for this animation, right? Zero to hundred. So I'm just gonna use automatic mode on all three of these. I'll select all three of them. Again, if we click Alt, it will automatically add the marker remap expression as well as corresponding markers for us. So now we have basically the same animation happening on all of them. Let's take all three of these and we want them to happen, uh, let's just say within 30 frames. So we'll just type in 30, click F, that resets all of them. Now for something like this, clearly we're not gonna want each one of the ratings to be exactly the same. And that's where the range mode will help us. So let's select the first one and we can place the playhead anywhere within uh, the percentage marker there. And we'll use the range slider to just set the percentage of the animation that we wanna complete. In this case, let's just set a whole number, we'll just type 38. And now when we play, we can see that that first one will only go up to 38% of that original animation sequence. Now, of course, this was a 100 frame animation, so the number 38 also landed on frame 38 as well. Let's do that for the other ones. And now we have three separate ratings reaching their goal within that one second time frame. Let's do one more thing with the behavior of these ranges. Right now, all three of them are reaching their target percentage at the same time. But if we select all three and change this into mapped mode versus full mode, and we know that because now there's a greater than sign instead of the equal sign, you can see that the ranges all travel at the same velocity and just stop at their percentage in equal proportions within that same time frame. So it's just a couple different ways of using the range. Uh, lastly, we can take these three, add easing flags to them, and now the uh, starting and stopping points of those will be eased. Now there wouldn't be much use in reusing these kinds of animations if we couldn't edit the text as well. So I've already set up master properties for the text elements so we can edit these values uniquely. And so now we have the same simple animation sequence feeding three different variations. In our last example, I just wanna show you a little trick about how to overlap markers to keep our sequences really nimble. Let's just set up this avatar really quickly. So I'm gonna click avatar, enable retiming. I already have a bunch of sequences mapped out here. So let's just go ahead and bring this avatar in. So that brings that up and we'll just go ahead and uh, turn the heart active and then the ring animation. So that brings the avatar in, heart goes up and then the ring completes its cycle. Now I'm gonna use our taps animation to simulate some tap events. So let's just enable retiming on this and uh, this will go ahead and give us our icon and make it persistent. And let's go ahead and simulate this idea that 
we've tapped on this little heart icon and then we're going to do a tap and drag across these check marks and enable all of them. So I'm going to zoom out, just go to our final frame here, grab all of these, and we'll just extend those keyframes all the way out and just to make sure we have our, all of our layers available to us all the way through. Okay, so I'm going to extend my work area all the way to the extent of the whole comp and we'll just do this pretty quickly. Uh, I want to show my background, make sure my smoothing is set to zero. Uh, I'll move our tap event out this way and we'll just start capture. Coming up here, click, and then we'll click and drag and then move off frame. And if we hit the letter P, that has now given us a bunch of keyframes that have followed all my motion. I'm gonna move that down so it starts uh, roughly just right around there until after the ring comes in. Okay, and click and click and drag. Okay, let's go ahead into our taps and see what that looks like. So I have an in event, just load that into cache. We have an in event and then we have an out event. But if you'll notice, we have another marker that's spanning both of them and that's this tap marker. So as long as the markers aren't on the same frame, after effects allows you to overlap markers in the timeline so what that means is we can use the in the out and the tap as separate separate events inside our marker remap system so we'll come back here to examples let's just go all the way up to the point where we want to tap on this thing and let's just say we've simulated that tap right there so we'll come here click tap and that'll do our little key press boom and right when we tap that we want our heart to pop and let's bring that pop back so that it pops right there boom and now when we come and click here and drag all the way down we can use our in and our out separately so that's going to give our in we'll drag all the way down and then release and that's going to be our out and then we can come to our check mark comps on each one of these and just check these as it drags down so we'll click that one down and we'll say check oops wrong one uh, let's see that is this one there check scoot up here we come down this one checks we come down that one is already checked but if we wanted to we can do the check reverse and then this one has a check as well. And just make sure that timing looks right. And we're done. Super simple and super powerful. Most of all, it keeps your projects highly art directable. Now, I also want to mention that after everything has been set up, you don't need the marker remap panel for everything to keep working, which means you can pass this file off to your clients without them having to own a marker remap. Even so, there's a bake to keyframes button here that will remove all the marker remap expressions and bake all the actions to straight keyframes in the time remapping property. So let's do that now. We'll go ahead and select all of our layers, set bake to keyframes. Now it's giving us a notice that some of our marker spans have easing flags. Now due to current After Effects scripting algorithms, these may differ slightly from marker remaps, easing calculations, and may behave with slightly different velocities. But I'm just going to hit OK. And now if we hit U to see all of our keyframes, we can see that none of the time remap properties have expressions applied to them. And everything has native After Effects keyframes. Now if you want a one-to-one -one bake so that all the easing matches the marker remap easing exactly, we can click Alt Bake to Free Keyframes. And it will go ahead and make sure that each one of those frames is baked as you saw it when you set marker remap up. Of course, that only applies to markers that have easing flags. All right, I hope that's helpful. I'd love to hear how you are using marker remap to speed up your productions. Thanks for watching.